and welcome to the Let's Grow Speaks. Today is Tuesday, March 17th, and I think this is episode 140. I just recorded like eight minutes of the show without realizing that I hadn't touched the button. So I might be especially for a minute. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Fat Squirrel. I'm actually Amy Beth. I'm also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat Squirrel SQRL on Instagram. That's who I am. Who are you? I don't know. Hello, G, though. I just want to say a very brief thank you. Um, I was I was on iTunes this week. I'm never on iTunes. I watch all and watch and listen to all my podcasts on Downcast, and so I had to look for something. I was oh I was looking for some a podcast that I used to keep up with non knitting related uh, to recommend to a friend and I had to look through iTunes because I have like the recommend words and I was like I can't remember what it's called exactly so I was looking on there and I was like oh I'm on this thing now I can go look at my reviews because I don't look at them really often because it's they're usually they are overwhelmingly super kind but every great once in a while one creeps in and I'm like. And it kind of throws me off a bit. <laughs> this show is not for everybody. And nothing like reading the reviews will tell me that. Most, a lot of the reviews are like, I did not know what to think of this woman. And I turned her off. And something weird happened and she came back into my life and now I'm happy about her. <laughs> so if you're new and you're still here after a minute and 45 seconds, it's okay if you don't like it. It's still okay. Move on. Watch something else. There's a million other podcasts. Maybe one day you'll come back. Maybe you won't. I may not be your cup of tea. That is okay. There are lots of other podcasts. One of them will be your favorite cup of cuppa. But anyway, I did want to say thank you to the folks who did write reviews on iTunes. It is super helpful. A, because there are so many podcasts now, for people to help find one that maybe they'll like, or even again, that they're even willing to try, like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. Um, it also helps to put us above... The other people in the um, crafts and hobbies section. Not that I, I mean, I kind of want to crush the woodworkers a little bit. Just a little bit. But mostly it's because sometimes people don't even know that there are any podcasts. They're going to look for something else and then they're like, what? What? what, what? So that's always fun. So that's a thing that I want to thank you for. There are many other things I can't think of at the moment, but I feel like there was one especially that I already talked about a minute ago. Now I've already forgotten, but I said it once and it's in the ether. So the thank you is in the ether. Do you feel it? Do you feel it on your face? Do you feel it? It's there. Okay. Administrati keeps going. That was still administrati. Um, I want to say, oh yes. I was reminded at the pipeline retreat and I apologize, I'm going to be touching my hair. Um, I always touch my hair too much. It's a flaw. Um, however, it's also kind of grubby today. <laughs> well, I love you all, but I didn't shower for you because you can't smell me. So, oh, usually, our, historically, we I think we've done a, a gratitude cal in February and March. If I'm not mistaken, we've actually done one every year in February and March. Uh, but this year I can drop the ball. Surprise! So I think we'll do one in April and May this year. So how do you feel about that? If you're new to the show or you forgot, you know, if you slept since last year when we did it. <laughs> so you forgot. Um, the gratitude cowl is actually anything you would like to knit for yourself. So a cowl, mittens, shawl, hat, socks, whatever you would like to knit. But it has to be for yourself. Period. Please don't ask if it be, can be for your aunt because she's wonderful and magic. She's wonderful and magic, I know. But for the sake of, like, the floodgates remaining closed and the sanity of all, quite frankly, I don't care if it's for you or not, like, necessarily. But for consistency and for everybody else's sanity to remain intact, it must be for you. I am not going to check to see if you have it. I'm just saying, okay? Okay. A wearable for you that you knit with the gratitude. So it just means that when you're working on that specific project, it's a great time in your day or your week, whatever, um, to focus on things that you're grateful for. They can be little tiny things like bird chirpiness, 
Um, I don't know. I was going to say showers, but showers are kind of a big thing to be happy for. I mean, they're a thing that I fight frequently. But when you do them, it's like, ooh, this is a fancy thing I get to do. So all those things. Or it can be a great big thing. Um, so lots of people have different approaches. Some people make a list of lots of different things that they're grateful for so that as they're working, they can kind of like peek over on the paper and just be like, oh, that's right. Some people like to focus on one thing at a time. So while I'm knitting today, I'm going to be very conscious of insert positive thing here. Okay? Okay. Gratitude is great. It's not just like a flurfy durfy thing. Gratitude is a really great thing. It does super awesome things for not only your attitude, not only the attitude of the people around you, but it does really great things for your health and your body. Okay? It does so many good things. It is like your mind making antioxidants. It's like your mind is like flooding your body with blueberries. Like that's what gratitude is, people. Th that may be the show title, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, okay? But it does super great things. It produces like all these hormones that fight all this bad stuff that we put in our bodies and that our bodies receive. You know it, right? You know some like cranky, always angry about everything person and something is always wrong with them? Right? Don't be that person. You receive gratitude into your heart. Let your mind flood your body with blueberries and everything will be better. How much, how crazy do I sound? My cult will have openings starting. <laughs> Anyway, that's happening. This year, um, before anybody gets started, donations are so appreciated. I had um, offers of donations from, at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat, from Daisy Knits, from um, Sun Valley Yarn and Fibers, from A Ride of Color. I had wonderful offers of donations for the Gratitude Count. But I would really like to kind of move away from prizes, like as we have traditionally done them, meaning like, here's a skating art for you. Um, just to help with like the flow and sanity in my life. And maybe also getting you things you really want. I'm kind of thinking about doing gift cards this year for the Gratitude Cal prizes. Maybe we'll do like, I have still some fiber that is part of um, people donate had donated in the past that needs to be rehomed because it was a donation of giftiness. A donation of priziness is the correct, not right word. <laughs> so that still needs to make its way. Um, but yeah, how do you feel about that? I would really like to do either one big gift card or like two medium, I would really prefer to do one gift card, but maybe we'll do two medium gift cards. Maybe one is not enough. I don't know, how do you feel? You can tell me on the board if you'd like to, but you don't have to, it's okay. I know you're busy, it's okay. People are so cute when they're like, I don't really watch, I don't really comment on the boards. And I kind of stalk, I'm like, dude, there's no right way to enjoy a podcast. Do you know what I mean? Like people who like watch, consume television, Nobody ever feels guilty for the way they consume television. Do you know what I mean? Well, we might feel guilty for our overconsumption of television. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, nobody's like, I really feel like I should have written that fan letter to him. No. So you don't have to feel guilty about the way you consume podcasts. You don't have to feel guilty at all. I know most of you don't, but some of you do. Just don't. It's fine. It's good. Feel your feelings. It's okay. That's totally Malia's. Her real, her feelings. Feel your feelings. Malia's rhymes with Maria. I stole that from her. Sometimes I feel like I have to footnote. I did not think of this thing I just said. Hers was in a much better context than that, but I still feel like I need to. I don't always remember. I'm an unconscious plagiarist. Sometimes I just re-say the things that people have said. I could never be a professional comedian. A, because I could never be a professional comedian. <laughs> B, because I would steal everybody's stuff by accident. It would be a thing I did, and other comedians would hate me. Also because I wasn't a real comedian. But that would be the thing that could stop me. Right there. My 
whole thing, my whole set would have to be footnoted. It would be ridiculous. Anyway, I talked a lot about nothing. <laughs> Let's talk some more about, well, not nothing, but nothing with things to show. Okay, so this weekend I went to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. It was so fun. It always is. I just stared right into my ceiling fan light and I'm blinded for a minute. I'm having some photosensitivity today. <laughs> Which basically tells me I need to go take a nap, right? That'll help. Um, but I need to drink some water. So, Knitting Pipeline Retreat. So if you've been with me for a while, you will know that this is the third time I've been to Paula's retreat. And of course, she is Paula, Paula Emmons Feasley of many designs. She is also the Knitting Pipeline podcast, audio podcast, if you're not listening. I'm judging you right now. Do we? No, not really, but you should. You should, because she's magic, and sometimes she reads you letters that Elizabeth Zimmerman wrote her. So I won't discuss that the first time I met Paula, I got really excited, because it really upped my six degrees of separation from Elizabeth Zimmerman. <laughs> oh, that's right. Paula's only thing between me and Elizabeth Zimmerman. Only thing. That's right. She's an excellent conduit. I'll keep her there forever. So, it's in Washington, Illinois, which is about three and a little bit hours from me, heading west. And, I'm so sorry, and we had our friend anniversary. Um, last, the first time that we went to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat was the first time that Malia Rhymes with Maria of the Yarn Raising Podcast, um, Joanna Spring of Knit Spin Farm Podcast and Knit Spin Farm Etsy Shop, Libby Ball, of Multicraftual Podcast and General Sewing Awesomeness. We had, that's the first time that we had all met. We had not met each other before we left for that retreat. It was very exciting. So this is our, what we call our friend anniversary. So it is not only a celebration because we get to go see Paula and all of Paula's awesome people who are joined around and because of Paula's podcast, it is also like a commemorative moment. So this year, Corey the girl also joined us for friend anniversary. Yay! So we had lots of fun. So all five of us headed out to Washington, Illinois in my minivan of awesomeness. You know what? Mock the minivan if you will. It can hold five people. There's stuff for an overnight. Libby Ball's um, amp and costuming for belly dancing displays. Joanna and It's Been Farms vending stuff and mine It's Been Farm vending stuff and some alcohol. <laughs> Unopened, of course. That's what I'm saying. Many fans are kind of awesome in that way. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, we went off to Washington, Illinois, and it was awesome as usual. We did all the things that people do. We had the lunches, and we did the retreaty things. We didn't do all the extra stuff, because we are, we do the strict Friday, Saturday only options. We got to go see the farm. We got to see some shearing, which is always exciting. It's always fun to watch people shear sheep. Although I constantly worry about their backs. <laughs> Do you have like deep pain for them? They spend so much time completely bit in half. That has gotta be murder on your back. I don't know how they do it. Obviously they have some serious muscular backup, but still, it worries me for their health. I know, right? <laughs> like I got room to worry for anybody else's health. But I do, be grateful for things and don't hurt your backs. <laughs> Sorry. The back is like the thing, if you hurt it, there's like no way to get around it. Like if you hurt your foot, you can sit down. If you hurt your arm, you can just not move it. But if you hurt your back, Sorry. There's nothing that you can do that doesn't involve your back. You can't lay down. You can't sit down. It's a hot mess. So don't hurt your backs. Um, so lots of great things happened. I got to meet lots of, well, re-meet and meet lots of great people. 
it's always fun. It's a really short retreat, so there's never enough time to talk to everybody. And sometimes I feel guilty because I do sit and talk to our little like minivan contingent quite a bit, but we don't really get to see each other. Even though we don't live very far from one another, um, we don't really see each other because people are busy and some people don't like to leave their house. Some people have animals to take care of. So it was so great to get to see people, but sometimes I do feel guilty. But then I try to be like, you know what? It's okay. I had lots of fun. So even though I would have liked to talk to more people, I wasn't at any point like, I should not be talking to these people. Mm, no, it's like that. I got to play a game with Sarah of Another Crafty Girl and some Indiana people and the beautiful Will Pierogi of, what is Will Pierogi's business name? Will Pierogi does the bats and they're gorgeous. And I can't think what her business name is. Is it just Will Pierogi? Oh my gosh, I'm such a fail. Anyway. Oh my gosh. And this year, for some reason now, I don't know, maybe this is the same every year and I just forget for a minute. That's totally possible. But this year was the year of me being like, I need to knit every Stephen West shawl ever. Okay, it's definitely not been that specific year. But like, I don't remember as much intense, like, oh, I gotta have that thing as I have in the past. <laughs> I don't remember having that so intensely in the past. I could be wrong, but I feel like this was a very good year for, <gasps> oh, what is that? Right? Stephen West shawls, especially now, now that he's progressed into like more of a modern art, by the way, oh my gosh. Have you seen Stephen West's YouTube? He has um, like, five to nine minute vignette short stories, <laughs> what we call them. Of like, one of them is like how to wear a shawl. One of them is just general goodness. I think it's called Boom Fashion, if I'm not mistaken. He's a joy and I'm glad that he exists in the world. <laughs> but he has approached like modern art levels of self-expression. So sometimes when I look at his patterns on Ravelry, I'm like, I don't even know what that is, Stephen. I could not call him Stephen. I don't know what that is, Mr. West. I'm not sure. But then I see them because other people are able to like delve deeper and see the golden joy. I see them in the world and I'm like, what? I must have that. I didn't know it, but I wanted it. I just didn't want it knit with Edison Bulb and Neon Beach. Is that that Malintosh colorway? Something like that. I mean, maybe I want a little bit of Edison Bulb and something. I gotta figure out how to do that because that is kind of amazing. But like, I see them in other color combinations and I'm like, what is that? So that all started because, backtrack, the lovely Will Pierogi, back, Will Pierogi Becca, had a stamen, S-T-A-M-E-N, a stamen shawl on by Stephen West, and it was gorgeous. In the product, in the product, in the, <laughs> the initial like photo, he has it wrapped around his neck, which is what she had too but her color combination just hit me in a different way. And then when she opened it up, I saw like the funness of how it was constructed. And I was like, oh, I must have it. And then oh, the Joanna Spring had on the um, color craving. Again, was not interested in it when I saw the initial photo but it was gorgeous in real life. And then, oh, I'll tell you about the next one when I actually got to it. Is it the S John? E-S-J-A-N? I free, oh, favorited. I favorited it. I think it's S John or Aethon or something. It's the one with those big holes in it, which I've always just been like, oh, that's distracting, that's too much. Again, not that I'm anti it for anybody else. Don't get me wrong. But just for me, I'm like, I don't, I'm not feeling it, you know what I mean? But then I saw one in the wild. Ravelry is moving too slow for my very fast talking mouth. Because I like to talk very fast. But anyway, the lovely Runs and Knits had one on. And she specifically made hers a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter. And, um, like at a tighter gauge, so her like big yarn ovary holes were not quite as big. I'm showing you her, I'm showing you. 
Why? It's <laughs> also, if you meet me in real life and spend more than three minutes with me, I will use the wrong, like I will just add random syllables to a word and use the wrong word that is clearly not the right word to describe something. Anyway, it's this one. This was her project photo, but it is not even remotely, this is not getting the color because I'm doing a photo, a, this is like the worst. I'm a bad technology consumer. This is terrible. But it was gorgeous on her. And she's even like a very petite woman. And I feel like that shawl would normally very much overwhelm a petite woman. It was darling on her. I need to make it. And the best thing is, I think I have yarn for all of these things. I know, right? I'm fucking So there's a sweater over there. It's not gonna get any love for a little while. <laughs> sweater. Not gonna happen. I need to knit all the shawls. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I have one for color craving, but I don't know if I really do. I'm probably lying. That one I might have to buy something. I don't know. So anyway, it was full of like lots of like, oh, it was like that a lot. And then Bob, who is Paula's, um, Paula's partner, Paula's, uh, Sorry, I just found a random hair on something. Um, he did a talk about Pi because it was Pi Day, March 15th, 3.14, or March 14th, 3.14, and Pi goes on to be 1.5, so March 14th of 2015 is supposed to be Super Pi Day. But as Mr. Bob pointed out, if you round up, it's actually 3.1416. So let's have another extra super good one next year. I, I'll take any excuse to have double pie day of awesomeness. So he gave a small little talk about pie, which was super fun. Always enjoyable. And it made me realize in a really weird way. Well, not in a really weird way. But I just had this moment where I was sitting there and I was like, this is so pleasant. I was like, you know what? I've not been in any sort of like non-knitting lecture. Not that I've been in that many knitting lectures either, but I have taken knitting classes at SSK, which are, again, a more formalized learning experience. But I have not had any sort of formal le learning experience in a really long time. <laughs> I really need to somehow figure out how to put that into my life again. You know what I mean? To fight a little bit against the brain atrophy. Because sometimes I feel like that's happening. <laughs> Maybe like, maybe one, maybe I wasn't really more clever. I probably really wasn't more clever. I probably just thought I was because I was younger and dumber. That's probably really what it is. Well, maybe not dumber, but you know what I mean. Like younger and more self-important. That's probably really what it was. But anyways, I was like, oh, I need to learn some stuff in a formalized way. Because really, <laughs> it was, anyway, it was very pleasant. So Bob. There was lots of other good stuff. I won't go like into like super and then this happened and then this happened because I feel like, you know, that would be maybe not exciting for most humans. But it was overall a wonderful thing. There was a beautiful vendor's market. Um, so the great thing about Paula's retreat is it's a really super low financial investment. The retreat last year, again, I don't know what it'll be next year. I give, you know, there, things can change. But in, historically it's been $65 and that is for... Um, you get there Friday at 2, and you are you need to be out Saturday at 4. So it's very short. So, like, if, for example, if you have some maybe large crowd anxiety or new social situation anxiety, it's great in that it's a very finite period of time. Like You know what I mean? Like, it's this much time. It's great because the people are very friendly and opening, open and welcoming, and everybody's in, like, one room, which can feel overwhelming at first but it also you know makes it so that you're not like well where are those people at and what's happening there you know what I mean so anyway so it's very approachable financially and time-wise you know I, I have a little person in school and so a lot of retreats that I would love to go to I can't really manage without asking a partner to take a day off or two days off from work and he does take a day off takes Friday off so I can go um, so just, you know, it's a little bit less, and it's a lot less stress to like get everything set up. And then even as a vendor, the vending market is only an hour. 
So it's an hour of a market and, you know, whatever, like an hour to set up if you need that much. Um, so it doesn't kind of, it doesn't take over your whole experience there. It's total great. And also people are super nice. So if you're stressed out about vending, it's excellent day. <laughs> so thank you. I had a wonderful time. Thank you to everybody who introduced themselves and set up, had some help come and said hello. Oh my gosh, Peace Lease person. Somebody asked me to bring Peace Lease. We never got to see each other after the farm. It just occurred to me. I had Peace Lease. Sorry. Sorry we somehow missed each other. Um, so yeah, thank you for every, thank you for everybody who supported me at the market. It was very much appreciated. I'm about to go to the grocery store this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> everybody. Thank you especially to Paula and her crew of awesome human beings because they are awesome. It's great. So anyway, so now I should move on now that we've talked for 26 minutes. Sorry. Maybe I'll put a little hoopity doo in there. Um, I have knitting to talk about. I don't have any spinning to talk about, but I do have knitting to talk about. So let's do that, shall we? I have some finished objects. <laughs> One of the things I'm not actually going to show you because I did not block it very well. So I'm going to try to reblock it to see if I can do a better job. Okay, so you saw this, I think, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you saw this. Yes, you did. Okay, so last time I was knitting on my excess hat. E X C E S S, just like excessive. My excess hat, I can never remember exactly where I went to put the um, garter panel. Oh, this is lots of people at the retreat were like, is that a barley hat? It is very similar to the barley hat, except it has, well, A, it's fingering weight, and B, it has a folded hem instead of a ribbing. The barley hat has ribbing at the bottom and is worsted weight. You're like, stop fiddling, woman. Okay, that was it. I'm done. Now I'm done. All right. <laughs> I still put it in the back. I kept trying to put the garter panel so you could see it, and I don't even know where it is. It's so like way over here. Okay, I lied. It's not really the bad. I'm not really done. Right. Okay, so now I'm done. Okay, there you can see. <laughs> you know, normally you'd be able to put it on a mirror, and like left and right would make sense. It would be much less complicated than that. But here we are. This is knit with Moon Rover Wild, W-Y-L-D. It's so crooked, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> Moon Rover Wild. And this is the Shipwreck colorway. I enjoyed this yarn quite a bit. It's one of the speckly ones. So it is overwhelmingly like a really like nice washy, icy blue, but then it has great speckles of like a really bright teal and a great rust. And a darker navy color. So it's very exciting. I knit this on, I did the brim on a US 2 and the body of the hat on a US 3. Again, I almost always go down two needle sizes because I no longer tension my yarn when I knit, apparently. Okay, that was it. The excess hat is by Anat Rodan, A N A T. R-O-D-A-N, okay? Um, what did I do different? I did cast on 10 more stitches just because I like my hats to be really loose. And I think I may have knit mine a little deeper, if I'm not mistaken. But I think that's all I did. Why <laughs> can't I keep this hat straight? Oh my gosh. Sometimes I wish I were a little bit, and I don't really wish I were an alcoholic, but you know what I mean? Like, so just should be like, ah, I had a few drinks. No, completely sober. <laughs> Cannot figure out. Okay, that's slightly better. Anyway, it was very pleasant to knit. It's very fun, low key knitting options. The hemmed brim, I always enjoy, and it gives you a little something extra to do. Um, but yeah, very pleasant. I love the yarn. All the things are good. Okay, so something else that's finished that you haven't seen before. Um, I decided to knit a Quaker yarn stretcher. 
and I decided to knit it with my hand spun by um, spun right round. This is her feather colorway, and this I believe is a Polworth, if I'm not mistaken. So here is my yarn stretcher. Now this is a double skein, and this isn't quite the whole skein, but it's pretty close. Um, so this is a double skein. I wish I had I saw Yarn Geek Fibers. Daisy Knits made her a Quaker yarn stretcher out of hand spun that was Yarn Geek Fibers dyed fiber. And it was at a much bigger gauge. Now, I, you were supposed to knit it loose to get as much like size out of it as you can. I was kind of afraid to knit it too loose because I had a double skein. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want it to be like crazy too gigantic. Because these are, this is that boomerang style. So it's a very shallow, it's basically a scarf on knit on the bias. So it's very shallow and very long and they can get kind of crazy. So I was afraid to knit it too loose, but hers looked really pretty at that loser gauge. But anyway, I still like it. And it has a tighter inside edge than outside edge, so it curls a little bit. You get like a whole thing. Oh my gosh, I'm moving through the camera. Is it making you dizzy? Are you okay? I'm concerned about your well-being. Don't bend over. Be happy. <laughs> so anyway, so you can futz with it and like move it around and stuff, but generally, that's like what happens. You, in the words of Stephen East, who is Stephen West's on-air character embodiment, you just explode it around your neck, and then you got something happening. That's what I'm saying. So I like it, and I love these colors. They're crazy. It's like all these colors that I don't do. Like pink, I never do pink. Purple, don't do purple very often. Teal, I do quite a bit. But then they're mixed in with like the neutral is a, there's a gray neutral and there's also like a taupey neutral. It's the greatest, craziest color combination ever. I love it. So right, isn't that bonkers and wonderful? Spun right round. Her whole head is made of genius stuff. It's true. It's true. It's totally true. Okay. okay. So that's all the finished stuff. Let's talk about. Ooh, sorry, I didn't mean to jostle you. I apologize. It's okay. So let's talk about some stuff I got going on, shall we? So I am knitting Susan B. Anderson's chili pepper hat. I had a brief like, oh my gosh, that says K. I never do the um. I shouldn't say I never do. I don't typically do the knit-alongs because I just, I can't, knit-alongs and I do not get along. <laughs> um, so I don't usually do them, but then there was a team this year, so then I freaked out about like bringing the team down. But then I'm probably still not gonna finish in time and I'll just mess it up anyway. Anyway. I'm knitting Susan B. Anderson. It's a free pattern. It's called Chili Pepper. It's basically just a nice slouchy hat with some striping on the brim. So this is Gail's art in the Crystal Blue Persuasion ah, ah, colorway. That's exactly what it is. You have to sing it. FYI. And then this is like some old, this is old yarn I dyed in the, um, that bead in your ear, or my ear. Something about a bead in an ear. <laughs> because I tried other colors with it because I was like, oh, I'm, I'm ruining the beautiful Gail's fancy yarn with my crazy orange stripe. But nothing else looked right with it. Like everything else just washed it out more, which was not my intention at all. So the orange hat, I feel like did it ultimately make the blue bluier, which is what I wanted. Because everything else made the blue less bluey which was not what I wanted, quite frankly. So I'm getting warm, all this stuff on me. Because, oh my gosh, it's like 50 degrees. Ah, it's so exciting. Um, so anyway, so there's that. I'm knitting that on US ones. <laughs> but I did knit on this in the retreat and I got this, I, I was just finished last right before I left. So I got that much done during the retreat. I think that's the most retreat knitting I may have ever done. 
So anyway, so there's that. And then, living in the same bag, I have a Susan B. Anderson. This is Susan B. Anderson's most recent Yowza Weigh It Shawl. So it's Yowza Weigh It Shawl number three. And it is one of the narrow, the not not like boomerang narrow, but like a narrower triangle shawl. And it has a what I if I'm not mistaken. I really liked the border on it. It's so the body is garter stitch. The border is called a ruffle, but it looks like it might be a ruffle done in ribbing. And lately, I've really been into ribbing, like borders on shawls that have ribbing. I don't know what that is, but whatever. And I'm knitting it with Leading Men Fiber Arts in their worsted weight base. This is the Harvest colorway. I have two skeins. Um, as you know, the Yowza is, is it eight ounces? I think that's the thing. I think it's eight ounces, so not 200 grams. It's actually eight ounces. It's a lot of yarn. So mine will not be that big. Mine will be smaller. <laughs> I don't know why I'm looking for a different word. Mine will be smaller, um, but that's cool because it's a weigh it option, I can still follow along. So right now I just have the garter part done, but it's very pretty, right? And of course, Leading Men Fiber Arts always does a beautiful job. They also vended at DePaula at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. If you're like, show us all the stuff you bought, I didn't. I have recently had a little bit of a, oh my gosh, the yarn is overwhelming me. So I'm really trying to dial back. I'm not just saying that I'm not going to buy yarn, but I'm trying to maybe slow my crazy roll. You know what I mean? Just like back it up because <laughs> that is what needs to happen. Um, so, but anyway, there was beautiful stuff everywhere. It was crazy. Um, but anyway, so yeah, like stash is whatever it is for you. I judge not. You can have this much stash or this much stash, whatever. But the minute it starts stressing you out, that's when it's like, okay. And I mean like, not just like, oh, I have too much yarn. But like, I was really like, oh, okay. I gotta do some breathing. <laughs> now, now, and it's really, it's surprising. Like I had this moment, like right after the holidays at some point. Um, and really it's amazing. Like I've already feel much better about it. And I've only knit, you know, a few projects out of it. Sometimes you just gotta slow down for a minute. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like by the time I go to SSK, I'm gonna feel fine again. Um, because that same inshallah is five skeins of yarn, by the way. Oh my gosh. It's five skeins of fingering weight, right? Stash busting. And there's another thing I'll tell you about that makes me feel better about stash. Um, but so yeah, even in that short period of time, I already feel a little better. Because I haven't quite gotten, to, I want to start with the um, Japanese art, the amazing art of tidying up or whatever it is, that thing that everybody's doing. So I want to start incorporating that into my life, but I need to also start really being conscious of it moving forward. Meaning not bringing stuff into the house just to move it out again because it doesn't adhere to the stuff. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So I, I do need, to, I want to do that moving, I want to get that book and do the thing. But I also really want to think about how to keep that spirit on my checking account. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I really want to keep that spirit when it allowing stuff into the house. Like, I don't want to just allow stuff in just to move it out. I don't want to just be the cycling point. Do you know what I mean? So right now I have to give myself permission and I do love to purge, don't get me wrong. I love to purge. And you know, like one of the things you do is your clothes. Like I've held on to professional clothes. I'm obviously, if I go back to the professional world, the things I have will probably be moth ridden. Okay, let's not say that, that's terrible. <laughs> but you know what I mean, dry rot, that's safe, right? Like everything, that, I don't wear it at all. So why is it in my house? And like, it's okay. Like for a long time, I was like, you know, I may be forced back into this job and I may still be forced back into this job. Like the beautiful conflu confluence, confluence of the, the factors that have allowed me to have this business. Thank you. You know, could drop out at any second. And I may have to go back to the world. But at the same time, 
I feel like that percentage has now dropped below like an 80% chance that's gonna happen. So I just need to get rid of that. But anyway, that was an aside that I didn't mean to take. Sorry. Let me just talk about something that I'm not doing that I don't know anything about. Let me just talk about that. Not a good idea. But so anyway. Oh, because we were talking about stash. That was a round, like, loopity doopity road we were on, wasn't it? Okay, I can show you that next time because I haven't worked that much out. Okay, so then this, speaking of feeling better about stash, <laughs> I used to be really plagued. Well, I shouldn't say used to because that was like last week. Not necessarily. But I used, I've, I very often feel an overwhelming pressure to use up like every little bit of yarn in a project. So for example, in one of these shawls that has multiple colors in it, I think, well, I can only use yarn where I'm gonna use up the whole thing. Can't use something that's in the stash if I'm not gonna use the whole thing, because I'm gonna do with half a skinny yarn. You make magic cakes. And then if your Malia rhymes with Maria, you make magic cakes and give them to people for their friend anniversary, which makes them excessively happy. I mean, really, it was like the price was right. Oh my gosh, Bob! I was like that. So A, Joanna gave us awesome surfing cat bags because FYI, this is not a reflection of Knit Spin Farm's typical fabric shop or typical selections for her shop. She does not have surfing cat bags in her shop that I know of. <laughs> so this is an atypical selection for funsies, okay? Usually they're like birdie and farmy and wonderful. Goaty. But sometimes you get lucky and you get a crazy surf cat in bag. Surf cat in? That's the wrong thing. Anyway. So A, that's awesome. <laughs> B, sometimes Malia gives you a magic cake. So last year was kind of like the first. Paula had very, no, I guess she did them in the fall, didn't she? So really the magic cake pattern has been out for almost like a year and a half. Oh my gosh, where does the time go, people? But last year at the Knitting Pipeline Street, people were making magic cakes. And I, you know you would never know it from my totally spacey, wackadoodle self. I'm really uptight. <laughs> I can never make a quilt unless it's like a kit because I stress if it's like the tone of the blue and this square matches the tone of the red in that fabric. <laughs> so I need I need to drink more, obviously. Come on, world. I need to drink more. That's what this is telling me, right? I need to drink. It makes, oh, that's maybe what I should do. Maybe there should be like, now I sound like an alcoholic. I actually don't ever drink. Not because I'm opposed to it, but just because I'm a fat lady and it takes a lot of work to get drunk. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I like not eat all day and then consume like a lot of alcohol in order to get tipsy. And that not eating all day thing doesn't happen very often. <laughs> it's the fat lady. It's cycle. It's cycle. So, that's maybe what I should do. Hmm. I'm thinking the thinking that that might be good. But so let us, isn't it exciting? Okay, so the magic cake itself is very exciting, right? I was really focused on the magic cake and how exciting that would be. Look at the shawl. Are you ready? I just started yesterday. I don't know if you can tell how exciting it is. Let me just give you some closer views of the excitingness. So depending on whether you have stock in it or, or stock in it, depending on whether you have like a tonal, a semi-solid or a variegated yarn, you decide to do different things in terms of like garter or garter ridge or stock in it or whatever. It is so fun to knit. It's really fun. It's super easy in terms of like knowing where your increases are and stuff. That's a piece of cake. You, of course, just like the self-striping sock, we're like, well, I gotta see what the next color is gonna look like. Except it's even better because all the colors are different. 
like I have a, I'm very much a fan of doing a self striping. Sorry, this episode is so long, but I didn't record last week, right? So it evens out. It totally does. So I'm a fan of doing the self striping sock and just getting like through the first repeat that thing. Ooh, and then I see the first repeat and then I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna slow down again. This is like the self striping sock, except the sock is never ending stripey colorness. And you don't even know how long. You're not like, oh, in three more rows, I'm gonna change the color. I don't know. Is it gonna be one more row? Is it gonna be 12 more rows? I don't know. Malia did all the magic and I wasn't there. Right. So, there's all sorts of funness happening. And then also I've been looking at those same in colors only <laughs> since we've been back. <laughs> so it's now Tuesday. I didn't start until yesterday because I couldn't do it with the people in the house. Oh my gosh, I was so cranky on Sunday. It was ridiculous. I don't do well with lack of sleep at all. <laughs> my daughter was playing Minecraft with her. My my partner has a son from a uh, previous marriage. What are the words? And he's 21 now. So they adopt like they all three of them. I don't play video games. Um, not because I'm against them. I just don't. But they adopt a very different way of communicating with each other when they're playing a game. And it involves a lot of like shouting and like, yelling of commands. And it stresses me out like crazy pants. <laughs> you know, like there are just like, s like certain couples interact with each other. Actually, somebody was talking, Millie was talking about this on the road. You know, like there are just certain communication forms that I'm not really comfortable with. Like very like this kind of, I'm not very good at that. And so they do this a lot, and I get really like, oh, what's going on? Why do you all hate each other? It stresses me out. <laughs> Which makes me sound like like some really peaceful hippie. That's not it at all. Like, I'll yell and curse and be crazy. But some, it's just something about the way they, they're always like, why didn't you do that? Oh, you should have done this. I think that's what it is. Like, I can yell cursey words at people. Sorry, people who were in my van who I yelled cursey words with you may have not been comfortable with. Maybe mostly Joanne Spring. Sorry. <laughs> I use some very offensive cursey words because like I've used the cursey words so long now I'm like up to a different plateau of cursey words which are extra cursey I'm just I gotta move to the next plateau which is just you know like that's made up words which nobody can be as offended about but I never see them in meanness I only see them with love in my heart they're festive fun you don't get to use them around people you don't know you get to only use them around people you do know so they're like a happy time conversation piece I know that's contrary to what a lot of people think, but it's how I feel. Really? I promise. I call my <laughs> Sometimes I call my husband <laughs> terrible things, but it's, it's never like in anger. It's always like, oh, you know, it's like that. Because I would never call a person I didn't know that thing, because that would be terrible. But if I call you, it's, it's like an expression of like, we are so together. <laughs> I'm broken. I'm sorry, people. I'm very broken. But, you know, again, like that's part of life and moving on. It's okay if you don't like my brokenness. You can at any time just not be around it. Except for my family. Everybody else has the option to do that. And ultimately they do too. It's just more complicated for them. What were we talking about? Why am I so ranty today? We're getting too familiar with one another, people. <laughs> I need to formalize this up a minute. I was just, I don't know, I was talking about the magic cake and how much it excites me. The shawl is fun. It makes, it makes using partial skeins a lot easier to hold in your head. Because I'll be honest with you, some people are going to freak out when I tell you this. I purge all partial skeins. I just do. Like I, not all of them, but 80% of them, I would say. I just purge. Like I just, I can't have it in my life. I gotta get out, I can't, ah, uh, it's gotta go away. So I feel like this makes, especially finger wagging your way, partial skin. <laughs> but this makes that somehow, again, you could like just put them in a little, you know, you get those big plastic Ziplocs, you could just keep putting them in there and then you could have a little too much to drink and have a magic cake party all by yourself. Or you could invite friends. That would be even more exciting probably. But you might not as get many as magic cakes done. 
Maybe don't trust your knots if you're drinking and doing your magic cake party by yourself. I'm gonna suggest that. <laughs> Maybe you should just do a fake magic knot, just like an over, like a, just a knot, and then just know that you're gonna re-knot that when you get to it in the real world. In the non-drunk friendship is magic, magic cake party making self time. I should really be recording this episode. What is wrong? I don't know what's going on. It's spring. Oh, that's it. It's spring. I'm going to go with that. Right? Spring. Things can be forgiven. It's spring. <laughs> I got to go to the grocery store, people. That's going to be exciting. I'm sure I'm going to come home with logical food choices after this. Right? <laughs> I'm just gonna have a cart full of little Debbie oatmeal cakes. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous. Anyway. So, Gratitude Cal coming up April, May. There's gonna be a shop update. I totally forgot about the shameless self promotion. I was so wound up. There's gonna be a shop, up, shop update March 20th. It will have a high variety of bags. Um, it is not only leftovers from knitting pipeline, but what happens is usually I try to do a limited number of fab fabrics and just do a higher quantity of them. But when I'm getting ready for a retreat, instead of just, you know, trying to sew two of a bag, which is maybe all I can sell at a retreat, I'll try to sew four of them and just hold the two back for you guys for the next time. So there is, um, I've righted pegs. That was a lot to say that. But there's not a huge quantity of each of them. So, just as an FYI. And I think that's all, though. So, March 20th, 9 p.m., there will be Eastern. There will be an update. And then, if you liked the Knitting Pipeline bag, which I don't have an example of here, but it's the one that there was, like, a coral-ish one and a gray and they had like Queen Anne's lace, almost like the solar prints. So it's just a white, there's no shadowing or anything. Queen Anne's lace, those bags will be up the first Friday in April. Again, at 9 p.m. Eastern. I think that's all. Sounds like a lot of things. So I think that's all of them. And if I forgot something, we'll talk about it next week. <laughs> Hope you have a great week and I'll talk next time.